Hello there crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be making an alternative using the March 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time in my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I am so glad that you're here. I recently got the newest paper pumpkin kit, which is from March 2020, and it is called No Matter the Weather, and I do have to say it's coming at just the right time. One of the sentiments in there says no matter the weather we're in this together and right now with us all trying to self-isolate and quarantine and social distance I do think it's important to remember that this is not a fun time at all but together we can do this and the days will get brighter. My daughter and I spent some time earlier this week putting together one of each of the cards like they show in the kit, but I thought I would come over maybe the next week or so and just share some different alternatives. For today, I'm gonna to be making a shaker card and I will be using this card that came from the kit. I just love this image in the background. I wish we could have gotten more of these. When I do start the process, I will go to a voiceover, so if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. But before we get to that, let's go over some more of the supplies that I will be using. Some of them will be from the card kit, and some of them are not, but if you don't have the same exact things I do, use whatever you have on hand to try to create this. From the kit, I will of course be using the stamp set that came with it, and I'll be using the sentiment that said you are capable of amazing things. Like I mentioned before, I'll be using this card, and then I'll also be using the rain boot die cut and this little blue sentiment tag. I pulled out the envelope that went with that card according to the instructions, but I will actually be using this more like a pattern paper because I will be using a larger size or a full size card for my shaker. Now for the parts that didn't come from the kit. The kit did come with the Stampin' Spot. I think it was basic gray, but I honestly thought it was a little too dark. So I pulled out a spot that I got from a previous paper pumpkin kit. This is Night of Navy. If I think it's too dark, just full strength, I might stamp off before I stamp on my card. To cut my die cut window, I got out my Hero Arts Infinity dies, and these are the nested frame cuts rectangle. And what these are, they start at four and a quarter by five and a half, and then they go down one eighth of an inch all the way down to this smallest size, and they're proportional to a standard card size. So these are great to make mats with, but I also love the shapes for shaker windows. I will be using the, the sixth, die from the center for my window today. For my shaker bits, I got out some teeny tiny diamond gems. I got out a clear and a blue, and I'll pop a picture up on screen. Hopefully you can see better the shape. I will be adding other items throughout the video and I'll make sure to let you know in the voiceover what those are. Let's get crafty. I got started by cutting off the printed portion of my card and that left that at three and a half inches tall. So to be proportionate to my card front, I cut that to four and three quarters inches wide. If I had it to do over, I probably would have cut a little height off that front card. I probably would have cut it to like three and three eighths inches tall and then made it four and five eighths inches wide because you'll see after I cut my pattern paper from my envelope, it's really hard to see those stripes from behind the front card. Speaking of pattern paper from the envelope, that is what I'm doing next. Now instead of just tearing the envelope open and trying to be careful, I actually slice just the teeniest bit off both the sides of the envelope and then I can open it nice and wide and there's no glue adhered to things or I haven't accidentally pulled that pattern off. 
Once it was sliced open, I trimmed that down to 4 and 7 eighths inches wide and 3 and 5 eighths inches tall. Now, there is that small little score line on the envelope from where you would normally fold the flap down, but you are never going to notice it in the end, so don't even worry about it right now. I wanted to make sure that I liked the placement of my shaker window, so I placed my boots where they'll go eventually on the card, and then I moved that die cut frame around until I liked the way it looked. I did do it a little bit off center there, and then once I had it in place, I grabbed a piece of my Scotch Blue removable tape to just tack that die exactly where I want it. The great thing about this tape is you can reuse it, and I'm actually gonna reuse this same piece after I do this die cutting. Speaking of reusing the tape, once I had my striped pattern paper centered on my card front, I got that little piece back out and I placed my focal card, the outside, onto that piece of pattern paper exactly where I want it to go later. This ensures that once I place that center piece back down, it's going to be exactly where I need it to be when I put the front on. For my shaker window, I got out a scrap of clear cardstock. This is just a 5 mil report cover. I use this for shaker windows and sometimes for clear cards. If you want to check it out, I do have a link to the product on Amazon below. And now it's time to start building the area where I'll put my shaker bits. I will be using my big blue roll of foam tape. I get this on Amazon. I love it. It's super economical and it lasts a really long time. Now because my shaker bits are thicker than normal, normally I just use sequins, I did double this up. So I made a frame around all four edges of my little pattern piece. And once that was done, I pulled back in my rain boots and I placed them over the card where I thought they would go. And because I don't want my shaker bits down too far, otherwise you won't be able to see them, I placed a strip of foam tape across the middle there just to catch those and keep them up higher. This is a great tip when you make shaker cards. Once all of my foam frame was in place, I then brought in my shaker bits and I put some of the clear and some of the blue in that top section of my frame. I put a lot more of the clear than I did of the blue. I just want that blue to be a nice accent. I did go ahead and put a doubled up row of foam tape along the bottom and the left edges of my card front. That way, when I put the piece that has the shaker window on it, it won't sag on the left and bottom. Because there was already foam tape kind of across the top and on the right edge, I didn't place any there. Once all the foam tape was ready to go, I then carefully aligned my top piece onto my card base, and now I will add those rain boots. I did go ahead and just adhere this flat down onto the card front. Because of the shaker window, there's already quite a bit of dimension, and I didn't want to add any more bulk for when I mail it. Now it is time to stamp my sentiment. So I got my stamp set back out and I chose my sentiment. Now because I wasn't sure again if I wanted to go full strength or stamp off for my sentiment, I did test it there on a scrap of cardstock and I decided I did like the lighter blue better. So I stamped off once and then placed that onto my fishtail piece. Once that was all ready to go, I added adhesive to the back of it and just adhered it again right flat to the front to reduce the bulk. Then to finish the card off, I pulled out some of the leftover clear pieces I had from the card kit. I love these. Some of them look like little raindrops and the others are just clear circles. If you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and know if you can just order these, will you let me know below? I try to look them up online, but I'm not seeing them. And here are some close-ups of the final card.
I hope you enjoyed getting how to see how I made this shaker card and maybe even got some tips for yourself along the way. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.